Um, today we have Roseanne Pruitt. She, Roseanne is uh, a nurse practitioner. Um, she has done research in health management, and she's recently taken a course um, from a national program at MUSC about um, faith activities and nutrition, and that's what brings her here with information today, where we're going to talk about um, brain health. So I give you Roseanne Pruitt. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, welcome. One of the things I was amazed at is how many research studies have been done in the last few years. There's a really heightened interest in brain health. So what I'm doing today is pulling out the practical parts of that and um, so we can look at, a lot of it is encouraging. There are really things that you can do to increase uh, or, and your brain health in both now and longer. Uh, Psalm 90, 12, teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Oops, let me see if I can get this to go. Come on. We were working fine a minute ago. Okay, there we go. Okay, factors affecting memory, aging. The APOE4 gene is the Alzheimer's gene. Chronic diseases and lifestyle patterns. And here we go. Many recent studies have found that lifestyle is modifiable to significantly, significantly impact memory. A positive impact was found even in those that have the Alzheimer's gene. So that there are things that even those folks that, you know, already know they have the gene and that that's, you know, something that's ahead for them, they can make a positive impact. Yes, Kathy. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what the makeup is of the gene. You know, it runs through families, but not everybody in a family will show those symptoms. But I think that's part of the, you know, it tends, depends on what's, what's coming forward. And it depends on whether it's on both sides of your family, too. You know, because siblings, some get it, some don't, when uh, one parent has had it. So, you know, but that's part of that DNA. Okay, let's see. Whoa, here we go. Okay, brain health. So the pillars, I am sorry, this was working great earlier. Be social, engage your brain, manage stress, exercise, restorative sleep, and eating right. So we're going to look at each one of these. These are really the pillars that are at the top of your handout there. Okay, so being social. Okay, love, whether it's romantic or platonic, releases dopamine, the feel-good hormone that is positive. Generosity. Um, Dennis, a couple of weeks ago, talked about generosity and gratitude. They're all part of this brain health. But it positively impacts the brain. Uh, people who are generous are more attentive, energetic, and happy. Social networks are essential for long-term mental and cognitive health. Fewer feelings of isolation and loneliness. And pets can bring pleasure and reduce stress. I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new for those of you that are pet owners. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things is important is engaging your brain. Learning keeps the mind active, increases the brain cells. Music can increase creativity, decrease stress, improve sleep. And like I say, there are research studies that have supported each of these things. Smells can increase memory. And think about... When you smell maybe a bread that your grandmother made or, a, or something that was, you know, that stimulates memory. There's also some work that's being done like with photographs and stimulating memory from looking at family photos and things like that in terms of, of uh, strengthening memory. Nature can increase creativity and decrease stress. Okay, there are not a lot of free resources um, this is at the top of your handout, but the AARP Staying Sharp. Now, there are things you can pay for, too, but they're free things, too. These are some examples looking at divided attention and short-term memory. Um, the little brain is running off with a puzzle piece. Puzzles are something that's good. Crossword, uh, the Sudoku, uh, Sudoku or uh, word search, you know, all of those things that stimulate the brain are very positive. The, you know, think about 
interacting with whatever it is. You need to be engaging. You know, if, if you're doing a game show and you're playing the game, it's much more positive for your brain than if you're just passively listening to what is going on. Oops. Okay, here we go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay. Managing stress. There's the gratitude. Improves mental health and well-being. Laughter can relieve pain and promote well-being. And I'll show you a brain wave. Here's the brain wave. <laughs> it's supposed to get everybody laughing. It's kind of corny, but... <laughs> okay. Walking, lots of research looking at walking builds strength, decreases stress, anxiety, and depression, increases energy, sending endorphins to the brain to improve outlook, and may boost creativity. So there's a whole lot of stuff looking at, at uh, walking. Other things that have been looked at specifically are yoga, which Kathy talked to us about uh, with flexibility. Dancing and tennis have all been re research uh, has been done on those. There's a lot of different things beyond that as far as activities. Um, evidence encourages even inactive adults to be active to a small extent to improve cognition even if they're later in life starting it. So even if they haven't been active, the fact that they become active will actually improve, um, improve their memory and cognition later. So it's not too late to start for folks that have not been active. Naps, even six minutes a day, are good for memory and cognition function. The deeper sleep en enhances creative thinking. So if you needed an ex excuse to take a nap, you now have it. <laughs> okay, sleep allows the brain to flush toxins and make repairs. For best sleep, you want to avoid the phone and the television for 30 minutes before sleep. The blue light stimulates the brain delaying sleep. It's seven to eight hours are recommended, which I know you've heard for years. Um, they also recommend that you try to keep a schedule so that you're going to bed about the same time and getting up about the same time whenever possible. Question? Comment? The blue light from the phone or the TV that has a blue light that admits that stimulates the brain. Okay? Yeah, that stimulates the brain and, and makes it harder for you to go to sleep. So smoking is always bad, any amount of smoking. Um, this, one, this study was really interesting. These folks went for a number of years with thousands of people, and they got to the end of the study, and they found that, of course, three-plus drinks per day increases the risk of dementia. But when they looked at their study, the people who had one to two drinks per day, just occasional, you know, one to two drinks a day, actually had a protective impact. And this is kind of funny because they had used their research money, the grant was over, but they didn't have any data to look at what else was going on with these people. But they were very careful to say, we're not telling people to start drinking. <laughs> But they didn't know why the people that had one to two drinks a day. And you can think about, you know, these people were probably engaged in all, you know, social activities and all kinds of other things. You could probably think of what was going on with them. But I thought it was kind of funny because this massive study is saying, we don't know why, but <laughs> this is what we found. Okay, what else can I do to prevent or delay mental decline? Maintain control of sugar level, blood pressure, cholesterol, heart rhythm, and have regular checkups. Okay, on your handout is a, um, information about nutrients and uh, food. I'm not going into that in detail because Angela did cover that and there's a whole lot of overlap with healthy eating is good for your brain. Uh, but things that you want to make sure are part of your diet are all um, uh, uh, in that handout. Okay, so we are ready for questions. Go back. Uh oh, one minute, we're going forward. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let's see if we can go back. Can't go back. Okay, the foods are on your handout. They're all listed there in terms of the key areas. And the other thing that's on that handout is uh, for substitutions. 
you know, if you don't like that particular food, there are also a list of other things that will also fill in for that. So that if, in terms of likes and dislikes, you don't have to eat everything that's on the list, but there are things that you can substitute. Okay, so questions, comments? Everybody's quiet, okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the circadian rhythms is the piece where it, where it recommends that you keep about the same schedule so that your alert time and your... Um, it will disturb your sleep, you know, in terms of looking at that. To have the, the best, you know, when, when sleep's looking at uh, removing those toxins and um, clearing, helping you think better, when you have an off and on schedule, it's, it's more difficult for your brain to respond to that. With the circadian rhythms, it's, that's the alert times and the, and the down times. Okay, that's that, that, you know, when you're looking at, um, and it, it varies with different people as far as when they're most alert and when, when they're less alert. Um, you know, you'll find a lot of people that say, you know, don't ask me to drive somewhere after uh, 8 o'clock at night. I'm not as alert. Or maybe even after I've had a big lunch. You know, that, that there are down times that they are aware of that they might not be as safe. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of paying attention to when, when you're most alert. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, nutrition, the light, the being outside, you know, it's particularly the light that you're getting from outside as opposed to indoor light. All of those things, you know, time of day, but it varies with, with different people. So you're, you know, trying to keep a schedule that's optimal for you is going to be when you're going to be benefiting the most better for you than indoor light yeah because you don't have the full spectrum the full light spectrum okay this is something that was published in the AARP journal but the neat thing about this it's called it's a game that's where are my keys and what it does is that you look at you're answering yes and no to see whether or not um, it's just a glitch or if you have a unhealthy routine or if it's something unrelated, or if there's a warning sign that you really need to see a follow-up. So I have a copy for everybody to, um, to play the game and see where you are. <laughs> okay, any questions or comments? If not, we will turn it. Yes, Mary. Yes. Uh huh. And when I do that, I always remember. Okay. Okay. No, no, it doesn't. But what it's doing, you're reinforcing in your ma in your mind, you're reinforcing something, and you're paying attention to it. And that's what this is. You know, it's talk. You know, because if you're distracted, you're not going to think about that. It's the same way when you go to one of the big stores that has multiple entrances. You need to think about my car is parked outside of this exit, and this is the exit that goes into the garden shop, or this is the exit that goes into the grocery store, and I need to remember to come out this exit so that I'm not looking at a thousand cars and trying to figure out where in the world I did I park. So, um, you know, but that's, you're reinforcing with your mind, so you're reinforcing the memory to make it easier. So, okay. 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 Yes. Thank you, Roseanne. You've given us a lot to try to think about and try, try to remember this afternoon. Um, next up, we have Mr. Phil Little, 
Phil is a karate grandmaster. He owns um, and runs Phil Little Karate School, and he's going to help us today focus on a little bit about uh, awareness and um, uh, self-protection. So here, here's Phil Little. Let's take all this stuff. <laughs> Let's see. I saw somebody come in with a cane. Who's got it? I want to borrow it. If you don't mind. Sure. Sure. I, I get it. I'll grab it. Thank you. I think that'll help. Especially this little hook on it. I want to use that. Today with me, I've got uh, Robert Fancher, who is a. Uh, a showdown, a first degree black belt under me at the Phil Little Karate School, and I've been teaching since 1974, and um, will continue to do that until I just can't. So it's it's a great fun for me. I have a, a lot of good friends that we've made through the years, but most importantly, I think that I'm doing a community service with teaching people the proper way to defend themselves as well as using it the right way. Um, it always starts with respect and ends with respect, no matter what. The bow you see a lot of times in, in a martial arts is not bowing to anyone. It's bowing, showing respect for that person or the people that you're working with or the person that's worked with you. And that's, that's what this, that's all about if you ever see that and wonder what that was. Robert, come on out. Um, we're going to talk about a few things today that are, are pertinent to defending yourself easily. And that's what you want to make it. Nothing needs to be hard. All these fancy things you see on TV and these jumping up and doing all these acrobatical stuff is unnecessary and really won't get the job done. A lot of times you'll put yourself in a worse position than you can if you do something simple. Like today, I know everybody usually has got a pen in front of them, correct? I want you to grab those. Reach out on the table there and get, get a pen that's in front of you. And first off, I want to give you a couple of places, and we have target points that I'm going to teach you, and there are only, there's only four today we're going to talk about. And, of course, where to, where to hit or where to, to activate into someone usually is the fourth place to go. You've got better places than that. So if everybody in here has got a brother, all you ladies have got a brother or a husband or uh, somebody that's that's a they've told you all your life that the first place to go or to try to hit someone is is in the groin and that's the fourth place actually number four so there's three better places and number one we'll show you where that is and we're going to learn these four and you've been in my class before so you've probably heard this already and you have too i think so the first place right here is a trachea right here in the middle of the throat right in that little hole about a quarter size. And I want you to take your hand like this, open it up, and make it really hard on the back of the hand. Okay? Now, you don't want to keep your finger straight because if you hit something, it can go backwards and it can hurt you. So we're going to tilt our fingers just a little bit forward like this. Because at, at any point, if my fingers give away on this technique, it'll roll directly into a fist and punch into the throat like that. It'll roll. If I hit something hard and I have my fingers pointed right, it's going to turn this into a punching technique automatically without you thinking about it. If you just do that little thing, that little crook of the fingers right here. So the number one spot on the body is to go right into the throat right here. Okay? And that's how quick it can be. And if they can't breathe, they can't get you, really, can they? And it's, it's at least going to do one of two things. It'll collapse that area, or it'll, it'll impair the breathing enough to where you can get away. And that's, that's the number one thing you want to do. You don't want to stand around and gloat about how great you are. You want to get out of there. You want to get away, get out. The one thing you're trying to do is remove yourself from danger rather than be caught up and get, you know, entrenched in some kind of struggle. 
and that's the best way to get out. And he, even if he's got his arms, you know, grabs me, you know, he's, he's got to do something to pull me in or whatever I'm just going to do. The closer I get to him, the better off I am with the technique I'm going to use. On top, up here, I'm going to reach up and just go right in, into the throat. And I'm going, if I do it, I'm going in and down to where that, you know, it goes down into the throat more so. And each one of you t right now can do that. And if you want to sit down and do it, that's fine. Or you can stand up and do it right now. And if you don't want to stand up, that's fine. Just, just sit right there. Okay? First thing I'm going to ask you to do, how many of you have ever tried to catch a fly with your hand? Do you know how fast you have to be to do that? All right, so this is how we're going to practice this. I want you to pretend that you're going to snatch a fly out in front of you, at least at arm's distance. But when I say go, I want you to do it. Because if, I, if you don't, invariably, every time we show this technique, I'll see people go. And they're not going to get there. There's nothing you can do that's going to get to the target unless you get the fly. And this is something I'm going to put in your head today. You're going to catch that fly every time you throw a technique. Every single time. No matter what we show you here today, we're going to do, and we want that speed in it. Because if you don't get there, and I want you to, now this is where everybody's going to go, oh. when you hit the target right here, I want you to pretend that, I'm, I mean, I want you to go to the back of the spine if you can, when you make that, that contact. All right? If anybody asks that, if I told you that, I'm going to say no. So anyway, we're here, right there, into the throat, you know, and it's, it's catching the flies, what's important, like so, as soon as you can, as quick as you can. All right? Let me see. Let me see you do it now. I don't. Re yeah, don't don't stop, really fall short because you know if you, I don't want anybody going out of here the ER. All right, you ready? On my count, when I say ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Ready, stop over here, YouTube. Ready, set, go. I'm gonna have calls coming from the preacher saying me. We had, we had two in the ER tonight. They, they're practicing your techniques. Okay, so catch the fly no matter what. Let's do that just out in front of yourself, not at anybody else. You use your own throat as your target, and that's coming to the center of your body instead of being out here at the shoulder. You're much stronger to the center of your, your, your middle than if you come off the shoulder. You're using shoulder muscles, which are very weak. It's the weakest part of any training exercise you've got. So get, get the lats and the chest and the hips and all that involved. And I want you to do one thing is lift your foot and step like you're like an ant's in front of you. I'm using these little things so you step on an ant. Now, when you step on the ant, don't forget about the back foot. Let it slide. And what I always call it let the heavy end drag. So that's supposed to be funny. Okay, all right, here, like that. Just step on, the, step on the ant and move up. Now, to coordinate that together, as soon as you're going to step on the ant, you're going to catch the fly because it's sitting back just a little bit out of reach, and you want to get the fly no matter what. Here. What I just did is activate my whole body weight and put it into the technique that's going to be charged into this person. He's going to receive... The weight that, I, that I'm pushing in, just that much movement will do exactly what my hands just did to him with that one little movement right here, doing that, okay? And this half step is the bread and butter of our whole karate style, just about, because we generate with the hips at that point. If I'm throwing a punch, I can lock in, throw my hips into the technique, and throw my hit to where it's, <clears throat> everything's going into him. Okay? All of it. Much more than just if I went like that. All right? So let's do the half step. Step on the ant. Catch the fly. Go! All right. Now back up, because if you're at the table, you're going to run, a, you're going to fall into the table. All right, back up a little bit. 
One. Okay, grab it. Get it every time. Now, let's, let's forget about the fly, and let's hit the target. Center of you, using your own throat, that's where you want to go. Ready? Go. Now, half extension won't get it. You're going to have to put it to 90%, not 100. Don't lock the arm. You want 90% extension. So get it out there to where that when you hit, I've got a little bit of recoil that's coming back naturally. I don't want to go like that. But I want, a, I want a little bit of recoil in the technique, okay? Go. Okay. Go. Now, don't look at me this time and look straight ahead where you're going. Go. Go. Okay, where's the number one place on the body to strike? Point to it. All right, number two is the eyes. That's the next. Number two is the eyes. Now, you can do that one or two ways. You can do this, or you can do like the Three Stooges and do this one, where they go right up the nose, and you'll hit it right every time. Just put three fingers out, go for the nose, and they'll go right in. And you go in, okay, directly into the eyes right there. And I won't go further unless you ask questions about that. So let's go to no we got a number one. Point to it. Where's number one spot? Number two. Number three is going to be the solar plex right here. There's a little hole, you know, about, a, about a silver dollar piece that's right in here that no matter big, tall, fat, or small, you can't protect. No matter if you <coughs> blow the breath out <coughs> and do all that, you've still got that one spot right here. Okay? And we're, whether we use our hands or fists, that's one thing, but if you've got anything in your hands, such as your pen, you know, you've, you've got two better places to go, but if you get, get caught up, you've got one of these, then I'm going to be able to, and this is very light, easy to handle, you know, but I'm just going to raise this up and go straight into there, all right? And number four spot is the groin, right? And you just like, I'm going to reach out to shake your hand when you have one of these, right up in there. That takes care of business here, and then right over the top, straight across the top here, just like though. Now, you guys are saying that, well, oh, man, that, this person has no, he, he doesn't care about you, obviously, or they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. So you have to get that in your head right off the bat, is that this is for my protection, it's not because I'm a bad person. It's not because I'm mean. It's not because I want to hurt this person. They're trying to hurt you. Or they want something you have, either in your purse, uh, you know, or whatever. So, and uh, please don't do this. Don't holler. If, if you're ever in a problem like that, don't holler rape. No, because people are just going to come to watch. Fire. Holler fire or and get yourself into places that are lighted and don't park in places that are not. Try to park as close as you can to things. And um, these are all just common sense things that are, that are easy to remember. And um, if, if you do have a problem or you feel like somebody's stalking you or walking behind you, <coughs> try to turn, get just walk away from wherever you're going, get into somewhere that's lighted where people are and, you know, that's the best alternative for you. Okay, this these things are, are interesting. This is a this is a cane. It's aluminum type of a cane that you can purchase about anywhere. This is just kind of a straight walking stick, and it can be used the same same kind of way that this that that I just used the other one, with any kind of technique here with a, reinforcing the hands, just like a battering ram type of t situation. Here, same move. Here, here, the Louisville Slugger technique, and that, that's pretty easy to remember. And really, the one that really gets them, you can go to number four on this one because you can just go right in there and get things started. Here, bam, next, all right? So number four and number three, you go backwards on one of those. If I was teaching, I'd say, okay, cane people, four and three, you're going to go one and Four and three, right there, okay? Really? 
Who said, who said that? Okay, here. All right. Here. Bend over. Go ahead and bend over. I can still hit him here. When he raises back up, I'll get over right here. He's going to raise up to come and get you. Because, he, you know, he's going to, oh, and the next thing he's going to do is that. Because it's going to knock him back. If he bends over like this, his balance, his balance at that point, I can just push him with a finger almost and push him backwards. So, you know, you're, you alter your, your balance factor. Any time that you hit, it's called in Japanese, it's called kasushi. I have, I have unbalanced you for the second, and it, it gives me any kind of a position I want to do on him at that point, at that split second. Once, once the balance, see the movement there, the foot lift, that's when I'm going to attack. Okay? Yes? Uh, it, it hit him anywhere hard enough, it'll knock him out. But that is a, this is a vital here. It can do more than knock you out. It's, it's really, that's, that's a good place to go. But, you know, this is also hard to hit. It's a very small target here. Your, your, your brain and up in this area, the skull is hard. You know, there's, there's separations. But right here is, is a, it's pretty soft. And, you know, you need to know what you're doing to, to, to concentrate on trying to hit that point. I don't worry about any point that I'm going to hit. I have no idea. Do not worry about that at all. It's wherever this person is and what I've got available to strike to make a difference. Because I don't want it lasting over a second or a second and a half. It should be over. That's it. And I'm, I'm gone. Bum loose. Out of here. Okay? So, and I'm going to show you. <coughs> Anyone of you guys Mason in here? Okay, I was going to point something out, but <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a really good one, and today most of you would probably have one, and you can get several types. This is, oh, I just grabbed this thing out of the garage, but I'm, you know, the same thing here. Good target. Good target. Okay? You know, there's lots of, if he tries to reach for me, I'm going to do a, half circle or a half circle technique here one get this off so i'm in paradise balance already and if i take it all the way around it'll put him to here and i've got several other things that i would do as far as if it was me if you were doing it i'd, I'd punch right up under this armpit there is a nerve zone here that's just absolutely painful to hit in, in any capacity whether i'm doing it with a punch or a knuckles or in like this Right up into that armpit, it's, it's a, that's tough. That's a good place. All right, so you have an umbrella that you can use, your cane, your walking stick, and then there's one of these. This is a custom-made cane and also a extremely awesome weapon because with, with this alone, if I'm, if I'm moving, and it's built really well for the support of someone who needs it, because it's right on that, that wrist here where that you're using your arm, and it helps if you're, if you're using this. Of course, you know, I've even practiced doing this, walking like this, so if I ever have to use it, I, I can at least know how to do this to where it looks normal So, <clears throat> and where I really need it. You know, I'm not making fun of anyone or anything else. This is just part of it. And in the PI business, you, you have to do a lot of different, you have to be a lot of people. So anyway, from here, once I put this in put place, I'm going to come and move it to the outside. I can use this, which is really supported by the whole arm, and this punch right here, devastating. Punch to here, devastating. But what, if I want distance, I got it. Because I'll be from here, turn it outside, just turn it like this, and I'll come all the way through like that. And I'll step back and come all the way across and all the way back and all the way up and all the way over. And this is a, it's a great weapon plus, uh, you know, the airports and stuff, um, they can't really remove a canyon from you at all. 
So it's legal to have, good to have with you in case you need it. This one particularly is made with uh, an octagon shape to where instead of just being round, it's got edges on it to where when you do make contact with something like this, it's going to do a number. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It, a lot. The main thing I'm going, if it's dependent on the weapon, you know, people talk, talk about being, I'd rather be shot and cut. I really would. But um, I'd have a better chance probably if they have a gun or what have you, because if, if they're at a distance, I'm going to do whatever they ask me to do. That's just, that's just being straight up with you. If he gets within arm distance, then I'll disarm him. I can. I would do that. I wouldn't have you do that, but I still can disarm him using the techniques that I have. Um, just hold this, and and just like it'd be the. I would. Well, that's not gonna work. Let go. If uh, this will work, but if I, he's got his knife here, here. I'm going to come in, I would come in top and bottom of here, and to, to your, this is an automatic release. When this thing comes like this, his hand is going to pop open like this, and the, this should fall right on the ground, just like the, that. But coming across it, just like so. And I, I would teach that in the class, but for me to do this in five minutes for you is difficult. You know, you're, you're at an impasse kind of at this point. To do what you have to do, do you get to a point to where you can use... You know, this technique, absolute. You know, where you really know you've got to do this. Or, you know, you have chances that they're going to cut you or shoot you one. Good question. Mm-hmm. By thinking about it, just like you're doing here, and standing in front of a mirror, and thinking about this happening to you, and how close you have to be to a person when you're trying to do these things, and you're, you know, this this close, is he's got to be close enough to do something, and most that they're trying to do is scare you. They want you scared. They want you in, to an impasse, not being able to to think right and do right and do what you know. All they're probably is wanting money or you know, whatever you got. Does that change when it's a I don't have any idea how they think, but under any kind of narcotic like that, it's they, and I, she, she can tell you better than I, but any kind of narcotic like that, they're going to not feel as much or any kind of pain that they can just continually go and go and go. That's why the, the police, when they subdue people, a lot of times that are on those drugs, you know, they have to use, <laughs> you know, some blunt force trauma to get the job done or to even put them in, in, in a car or get them handcuffed or anything else. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the drug part is something you have to overcome. However, if you use some of these techniques I've just showed you, now that doesn't matter. That's, that's going to collapse, and they're... They still can probably do a couple of things for us a second or a half second or so, but that's going to catch up just like that. Okay, is that right? Right or wrong? Awareness is probably your your best bet in in all that you do. Is is making sure that everything that your surroundings that you're in, if you see something, especially you ladies, that just kind of goes off in your head as not being right, you're probably right. That's a sixth sense that you have that we don't. You know, we, we may be able to interpret some of that, but, but you guys have got a really sixth sense for those things. And pay attention to it. Be aware of your surroundings from everywhere. You've got vision from here to here. Okay. Be aware of if, if you feel like you're hearing footsteps or you notice somebody's following you. 
if if the gap's starting to close, then you need to change direction or go somewhere else to where you, that you can find people or light or get into the public eye somehow. Okay. All right. And you know, using glass, using the things that when you're walking down the street, if there's a store window there, you can look, see people behind you, and pick up on a lot of things by just looking and and using the reflections of things, okay? Um, I don't know much else to, to say on that other than just in your mind's eye, just keep yourself always in a point where you're safe, in a, in a direction around you to where that you feel like that you can get somewhere else, get away from people or get away from anyone. And, you know, if you've, if you've got one of these or uh, carry a pen, the pen... <laughs> Let me tell you, this bad boy right here is the most, that's one of the best weapons you can have. Now, does this look like I'm, what does this look like? Everyday use. I'm not making you nervous with it, am I? I should after showing you all what that does. Okay. <clears throat> but this, you take, take this pen and lay it in the palm of your hand. And being aware, I'm, I'm still on this, so I don't really have to be <clears throat> in a dangerous situation to carry a pen like this. Because this looks like an everyday normal in a grocery store, grocery list, whatever. You got this. And take it and put it right there in the palm of your hand. Index finger. Number one. Number one, catch the fly. Remember, now you're going to dot the eyes of the fly. Can you get him in the eye? Can you get him in the eye? Small circle. Aim small, miss small. There's a movie that that was in. If anybody can name that, you get the daily double. Aim small, miss small, right here. That little point, that little freckle. That's what I'm after, dotting the eyes of the fly, right there, boom, and all the way to the back of the neck, okay? Now, being aware is also being aware that you have a weapon in your hand right here that you can use, and you don't really need a whole lot of anything other than the guts to do it. <clears throat> that comes from practice. Practice makes perfect. No, it doesn't. Perfect practice makes perfect. And doing that in front of a mirror at your own trachea, at your own body, striking. And what are you trying to catch? And whose eye are you dotting? Whose eyes? The fly. Boom. You want the fly. I want it as small as possible so that you learn to do this. Now, there's another thing that I tell my students to do. When we're working on <clears throat> weapons techniques, which is a six-foot staff rather than this, and, you know, it could be a broom, it could be whatever, but there's striking moves that you do with a technique like this, where you just boom, bust it out like just, just like you're almost shooting pool, but you're going to do it with a hand like so. We go outside. Dogwood trees are the best because the leaves are small. And we go straight up to that and pick out a leaf and concentrate on that put herself in position where our feet should be and then test it and see that if you could have struck it, struck it right there. And then stand and hit that leaf. Boom. You get that good to where you can hit that every time. Every time. Every time. Same thing with the number one spot with this hand. Walking straight up to a, to a, a tree with little leaves on it of any kind. Doesn't matter what it is. Pick out that leaf. Right there. And, and get on it. And make sure that you're hitting the one you're looking at. <clears throat> that will help you. And people might look at you like, what is she doing out there? She's crazy. Lost her mind. Well, guess what? You, you don't care what they think. Because you're doing something to repetitious. Repetition. 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 Is, is what will be embedded in your brain to the point of what she said when you get that challenge of being under stress, being under 
you know, conditions that just shut you down for that second or two, that's not going to happen because you've trained yourself for that moment. That somebody's doing this. And another thing that you can do is if a person's following you, being aware, looking in the mirror of a window, <clears throat> seeing it on the reflection of a car door, you got this person, that's, and then you start to turn, and he turns with you, and right here on the turn, I'm going to turn around and get in his face, and just as loud as I can. And I'm going to take these off. What are you doing? What are you doing following me? Get in their face and get up tight with them right then. And then at that point, you know what they're going to do? They're going to look at you like you're crazy and they're going to run. Or even if they do anything at that point, you've done two things. One, startled them. Two, got attention from outside watching what's going on. Okay? So that's, a, that's one nice thing to do. And all of you guys have got a, a volume level that you can yell with that nobody else can. Nobody can top it. When you get to that point and you turn and you yell like that, you're going to give it everything you've got. And that, that will be a, one of the best defense mechanisms that you're going to have. Plus, you've got your hands always up. I meant to start the whole class with this. Hands are always here in a reasoning position. Because look what you're going to be able to do. Number one, get the fly, dot his eyes. You know, from here, boom, from right there, boom, just straight out, straight into the target. Look, man, I don't, look, you just need to stay away, all right? I'm just, boom, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Oh, questions, yes. Long enough for you to get out of there. Long enough for you to get away. I wouldn't give it over 10, 15, 20 seconds. But if you got that long, that's, a, that's like an hour. In one of these situations, 10 seconds is like forever. So if I've gotten five seconds, I should be out that door. But don't stand around and gloat about what you do, how good you were in, in the hitting the, getting the fly, you know, because that guy may come back with an airplane. All right. <clears throat> Sure. <clears throat> sure it will. Um, <clears throat> for, for this one, I'm going to use this one because I like it. I like it because it's got the hooked edge, and if I if I really bought a cane to do this with or taught a class with, this is this is an absolute self defense technique. Uh, cane, period. It's not for anything else, but it will disservice what you need done. It's a little heavy. This is not, but on on that respect, I'd, I'd get this down on this end, to where that you know you can, instead of hitting here and, and being afraid of missing, like the dog's head or face. Just swatting like this, you know, this, from this end, you've got a lot more. Say, for instance, his fist is, his, is the dog's head, okay? If I'm doing this, I could miss. But if I've got it like this, I can do this here, okay? And you can also, I don't want to hook the dog or get it close to me at all. All I want to do is ward it off. Just, just keep this like this, all right? And... Number two, the dog shouldn't be off a leash in the first place. All right, is that in your neighborhood? <clears throat> you in the county or city? Call the county. Call the sheriff's office. And you you need to do that for two reasons. One, if they have record of it. And two, they should send an officers out to take a look at that. And you, you just tell them, say, look, I'm scared to death. This dog, my pincer, he's off the chain. He's not on a leash, you know, and he's coming out at me when I'm walking up the neighborhood. 
just walking, trying to get exercise. And don't worry about what the owners think. They're, they're violating the law. Well, it would me too. Doberman pincers are they're pretty tough. Questions? Yes, ma'am. I oh, pulled into a car. Sure. We'll talk about that after we get through with all this, this here, but um, I don't know what kind of time frame I'm on. I'm probably over. But Okay, well, we'll talk about that. You know, being sitting down, your center of gravity is lower than theirs. And we, that's what we teach in the martial arts. We know that if I'm, if I'm at a level like this, that's why I always start with a good bend in the knees, and that's something you need to note in your brain right now in your head. Anything you do, you want bend in your legs because you cannot take a step without bending your knees first. So already get them bent. Already have them bent. That's, that's kind of a, and it doesn't have to be much. You just bend the knees. You've got to unlock it. You don't want them locked at all because you've got to move the legs like this to start movement. Okay? So, again, sitting down, <coughs> you know, your, your center of gravity is lower hold that, <coughs> than his. So, you're talking about if you're sitting and they grab you out of a chair or? Oh. Okay. Well, then we don't need to worry about that. Let's 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 talk about what what we just got through through saying is where would you strike now that you know? What about the eyes? Okay. All right. Mace. I didn't talk about that. A lot of people have mace and put it in their purse and such. And if you've got a, a small handgun, I mean it's legal. Put it in there. If you're haven't taken a course. If you'll see me, I've got good people that really know their business and really are good at, at training any person to use a handgun. So um, some people are just totally against that. That's fine. But if you are interested, I do have some really close friends of mine that teach that, and they're really good. Um, so the question is, if, if they're going to pull you into a car, again, you know, reaching out and... From this position here, they're already pulling, they're already pushing themselves out here. They've got to get you and, and uh, redirect their energy to pull back into the car. So as they're reaching for me, I'm going to pull them out of the car themselves. And if they fall onto the ground, you want to kick them right in the head. Just boom, just like a football. Extra point. Boom. Good. <laughs> All right, so... That's, and you know, you've, you've got to stage yourself. If that really, really bothers you, and you think that that would be something that, that you know, I just stay away from roads, stay away from, on the sidewalk, walk on the far side to where that, you know, they're going to have to get out of the car, run over there and get you, and they, they won't do that. That's too much being seen. It's really quick. Open the door of these guys. Somebody that's going to do that, one, they usually do it for a purpose, you know, whether it's ransom, whether, you know, they're going to kidnap a, a young kid or a person, sell them somewhere overseas. I mean, you know, all this goes on. So just be aware that the farther you can get away from where a car is traveling, if that's a, an issue for you or you're thinking about that, you know, be aware. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? All right. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad to do this. And uh, on behalf of Phil Little Karate School and the United States Asian Root Karate Association, which I'm president of, um, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here in front of you with my own church folks. And, you know, ask me any time. If you've got questions, you, it's, it's never enough. If you, if you want to know, and if I'm available, ask me. I don't, I don't mind a bit ever to answer questions for you okay this is robert fancher and i wanted to thank him too for coming and being my guinea pig up here so and, and uh robert not only is a, a good sport but he's an excellent martial artist so we thank you and have a great day